Hey guys, John here. Today's patch is called Medieval Keys, and full disclosure, I was not alive during the medieval times, so I don't really have a personal reference of what medieval keys should sound like. And with that being said, here's a drum groove and me freestyling to that drum groove of medieval keys that I have no idea what it really sounds like. So here we go. So yeah, something kind of like that, and without the drums in the background, it kind of kind of sounds something like this. All right, so let's get into this bad boy here. So. We are going to be using the utility engine, engine number two and engine number one, both filters and really only two effects. This one isn't really two effects heavy or really macro heavy as I left the last one untouched as it says macro four. So let's turn off the effects here. Let's go to our synth here, turn off the utility engine, the sample engine number two, and let's look at the first one. So it sounds something like this. Okay. So first thing that we did to this engine here is the coarse tuning. We turned it up one octave here. We're going to be using a square wave. The volume is going to be at zero, so all the way to the top. And then a triangle wave, and same thing, the volume all the way at the top. We're going to be using unison with two voices, detune 3%, which I believe is default, and then the stereo 100%. And this one is getting sent to filter number one, which is this comb, which we're going to talk about in just a little bit here. So that's what that one sounds like over to number two, we're going to be using a sample engine and this one is called the Tutti Octave. I don't really know if I say that right, but anyway, you can find it if you click the uh, the button over there, strings bowed and is Tutti Octave down over here, one, two, three, four, five, six, the one down. And we're using the start position kind of around 0 0.404, but we also, also are using a randomizer to slightly change the start position because you notice every time I hit a key, there's a small range it moves within, not really too big, but it's different every single time we hit a note there. And this one's getting sent to filter number two. And then over here for where our unison is, we click this here and then go to resonator. And we're gonna be using the dry wet at 0 0.620, the in harm at one, the resonance at 0 0.964, and then the course is gonna be zero. So the modulation for the start here is random number one. So let's take a look at random number one. This is gonna be a sample and hold right over here. Sampled from white noise and re-triggered by the poly keyboard. As every note I press, we get a new value over here, which corresponds to the movement here, which changes this position right over here. Very cool. Now, before we get into the utility engine, let's turn both of these on and the utility as well. And something you may have not noticed, or maybe you did, what we are using here is this envelope is very important for this one here. So attack is going to be one millisecond, decay five, four, three milliseconds, sustain zero, release 20. So the reason I say that is let's turn these off here and let's look at the utility engine. So we have a sub kind of going here, which is going to be on the macro, which we're going to talk about in just a second here. But really what I want to point out is these two noise. So it sounds like the, like the snare 808 and then analog noise. And as you can see here, we're using envelope number two to kind of just open this up. This one is just, is just going to be static right over here. So the second one, just kind of that soft analogy background noise. However, the click sound, this right over here, is triggered every time you hit a note and it goes away really quick. So if you look at this, this is the envelope number 2.88 amount, so 88%. And then if we look at this envelope, it's gonna be attack one milliseconds, decay 300 milliseconds, sustain zero, and release 100, decay curve negative four, and attack curve zero. So that's kind of emulating just that kind of clicky sound when you hit the notes. So when we put everything together in here, We kind of get that clicky, almost like we're hitting like an old keys or something like that. If we took it out, it sounds okay, but it doesn't really have that attackness to it. That almost that age kind of sound to it. So 
So yeah, and both of these noise one and two are going to filter number two. And then this last one over here, this oscillator, the sub oscillator is down one octave, negative 12 semitones, sine wave, and this one's going direct out. And we can also control this on a macro. So if we like the sound, but the sub is a little bit too much, we can take it out entirely. If it's kind of conflicting with maybe something in your track, or if you like it, and I left a healthy amount too, so you can really crank that sub if you want to. So it's up to you to find that middle ground. Something there's kind of nice. Carries the low end a little bit, but it's not really too overwhelming. All right, so let's talk about the filters. So as I said before, this first engine analog number one is going to be the only one that's really going to filter number one. So that's going to be this comb filter right over here on the... It's usually selected on the multi-mode, but then we can click this here and go down to the comb. And then the frequency is gonna be 560 Hertz, the gain 0.942, volume zero, no change on the pan. It's gonna be on the mode feedback and it's gonna be full keyboard tracking. And then this one is also getting sent to the second filter over here, as we can see in the filter routing. All right, so moving on from there, the uh, next filter is gonna be the MS-20, which is where engine number two is going over here, where utility engine, or the utility engine number one, the noise one is going to filter number two, as well as the second one, and as we said before, this is going to direct out. So now we can get into the effects here. So if we turn this on right over here, we really just have two things. We have a multi-filter, and then we have a reverb. So if we take this reverb off here, We have our macro controlling this filter as opposed to the filters over here because this seems a little bit more independent than I kind of wanted here. Because this sound can get very high endy and it can get kind of annoying. So that's why this is kind of here just to taper that off if you'd like to. So it is a cutoff, but I decided to name it filter just so it kind of softens things up a little bit. Maybe I should have named it the softener. I don't know fabric softener or something like that. Next up, we have the reverb over here. So this one's not too complicated. Pre-delay is gonna be 20 milliseconds, size one, decay 0.345, stereo width 0.5, high pass 200, low pass 9,756 hertz, and the damping is at 0.6. The value for the dry wet is going to be at 0.43 or 43% when the reverb slider or the reverb macro is all the way at the top there. So this patch is pretty simplistic. It sounds pretty cool. The macros are very intuitive. So we have a softener over here for the first one. If you want something really dark, you can do that. And then we have the sub that was what we mentioned before. Totally up to you how you want to use that. And then the last one is the reverb. I generally always put the effects or reverbs on macros. So in case you load it into a session, you're thinking, okay, the reverb's cool. Maybe it's not. You can always turn that dial off and then use your own effects as a very simplistic way without having to go through all these modules and see what's what. So it makes it a little bit more easier to use, a little bit more intuitive. So that was Medieval Keys. Hopefully you learned something. If you'd like to get it for free, there is a link in the video description below. Just click it, download it, and install it, and you can have Medieval Keys as well. There we go. That kind of resolved a little bit. But anyway, yeah, thanks for watching. Hopefully you learned something and we'll see you in the next video.